So welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today it's kind of a different type of video from what we normally see. Normally, we do kind of reviews and unboxings. And whilst this is a literal unboxing, so to speak, this is more of a comparative um, video. So, we'll start with Upfront. So this is an old um, game from the Avalon Hill Game Company. This is like one of the grandfathers of modern wargaming. Um, it's a two-player tactical squad level game. And I'm not going to go through all the um, kind of components here. I'm going to compare them with the new one, so to speak. But basically, there's a bunch of different cards and chits in here. And this actually has the Banzai expansion in it, which my father-in-law had. This is his game. So there's some bits and pieces which we won't compare quite yet. But, but this is the, a very old game. If you want to buy this online, I mean, you can pay easily in excess of $100, and the condition of the game will be much like this, where it's been on a shelf for many years. It's in great nick, but it's worn, and the components at times show their age based on their like artwork and their style. And we'll take a look. Like the cards, if you can kind of see here, have this perforated edge on them because it was those ones where you had to like punch them out of, of a sheet and they're kind of a very odd size and shape so the game is unbelievably fun this is fantastic this game is still played very regularly at tournaments um, at conventions things like that I mean I will sit down and play with this with my father-in-law um, who you know bought this brand new in 1980 I want to say it was 83 um, he loves this game. This is a, f it's a super great game. This isn't going to be a review of the game. What this is going to be a video of is how you can get a hold of this game without breaking the bank. Because what I found through research was that um, drive Through RPG, at least an affiliate of theirs called the Wargame Vault, has a copy that you can buy um, that's it's a, it's a replica of the game. Because there's a lot of different, uh, I think there was some kind of legal and licensing issues um, where Avalon Hill have the rights to the game but just were sitting on it because the company went out and, well, that's kind of what it is. And what we have here is they were able to get permission to scan all of the components of the game and they reprinted them for you. So you can get all the components of the game so that a new person like myself can pick it up and can play and have it, their own new copy and it doesn't cost you $125 to do it. So the set that I got is called the Upfront Starter Game, I think it's the Core Game Bundle, and this has everything in it to play kind of the core game that, that I just showed you. It doesn't have any of the expansions, although t both of the official expansions are available. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of take a look at everything, and I think this cost just, a, it was like 50 Oh gosh, I want to say it was like 50 bucks, 55 bucks or something. And what it is, is it's a, it's a bunch of different decks of cards. And then they give you, there's also some kind of big sheets here, which we'll take a look at. And then they give you, um, this is a PDF scan, which they give you a PDF and you just print it out of the rule book. This is the original rule book. I don't know if they updated it at all. I think it's just the regular rule book. I know there's been a lot of different revisions of the rules on BGG, just just the clarity and to kind of add in different bits and pieces. Oh, you know what? This is. This is here and this is the second edition. I believe this has the errata in it. I believe. Um, the, the, this one here is, this is a first edition game. I believe this has kind of the, this one that you get has the errata and kind of updates in it just for clarity and things like that. So I'm going to kind of set that aside because this is just the, a, a big old rule book. You'll churn through this. To learn the game, you don't need all of these, but th that's the rule book. And if we dig out, let's see if I can pull out the original rule book here. And something that's cool is that the artwork for this game is by Roger McGowan, who now is, who does C3I and works in his uh, GMT as well. And this is just like, this is old school from him. Okay, no, this is the second edition still. So I have a, a, an, a, an identical copy of this rule book. And so you get, um, the tones are a little bit darker. P partly that might be my print settings, or partly just because this is old. 
But as you can see here, this is the normal rule book with the scenarios in the back. And my one here um, is, is very much the same. So you can kind of see this where they scan. I don't know if you can see this. It's actually a little bit, the color, the background on this page is slightly more discolored versus this one. I believe that's the case here because this is just yellowing over time compared to the white on the inside. So, that, you know, you, it shows its age in some places because it is literally, they scanned it high quality page for page. So you'll get some of that. But that's the rules. You can, I think for $10, you can get the full rule book with both expansions printed out in a, in kind of a soft cover like this which I might do eventually when I get the expansions, but you get a free PDF copy to print out yourself. So what we'll do is we're gonna kind of just compare some of the components here, because really you get a bunch of stack of cards. And what was interesting is from the base, from the original game, you have like hundreds of counters that represent all these different weapons and um, kind of, uh, what would you call that? The, I'm drawing a blank. Um, conditions, gosh, I can't think of the word. Uh, things like that. And what they did is t they transformed these counters, all of the counters in the game, into cards. Now, they gave you, this is a double-sided scan of the counter sheets, and you could just cut these out and use these, but this is, this is, uh, this is what I would deem thick photo paper. This might be two photo papers stuck together. That's what this is. So you could use this, and this is all the original counters, and they're very clear, considering what they are. So you can see where the chips were originally joined together. They literally just scanned the counter sheet on a pristine copy. But the colors that's slightly uh, washed out, just because it's a scan, it can only be so good. But what was really cool is that they, again, they made all of these counters into cards. So it's easier to store, but also, you know, they can give you nicer, nicer kind of counters. So let's take a look. There's two sheets that you get. One, two. So I get all these range and these things here. So what they did, so here, for example, you've got these um, fired last turn. You've got these star shell markers. And on the back, you've got different star shells here. And obs what they did is they just made a card with that. And this is, these are the mini sized cards. So when you want to play a star shell, you play your star shell out, and then it has one, two, three, and you would literally just turn the card to show you which kind of you know level the star shell brightness is at. And then you've got that fired last, and then on the back you've got entrenched, you've got flank left, flank right, you've got encircled, and it gives you kind of the mini rules and bits and pieces. Again, all of which was on. Um, was it was on these counters so instead of these encircled markers here um and it, so, so it was encircled and then on the back let's see well maybe they're on this sheet here we go entrenched and then where's the where's the flank markers i'm just being blind i think but all of these counters they reduced into these mini sized cards so this is actually much easier to play with. It's a lot less to dig through. Here you've got these, um, these are extremely long range markers. Um, and they've got all of the different um, kind of faction aligned markers. Again, it's an amalgamation of these markers here. And you've got your range markers. You would just range, you turn those to get different ranges. Very, very simple. Very clever idea and well, well implemented. So that's kind of some of the conditions there. And you get some, some neat little ones. You've got the deck markers based on how many decks you're going through. Line of sight divider. And then you've got time limit. Just, just the um, little markers to use during the games. So those I find is really cool. So those are units and weapons. So let's take a look at these. Because these are the units of the game. Oh, if I can slide these off. They, they come in there. These decks of cards, obviously I can't get it off. As I'm being... Okay. 
And what they do is they tell you everything that's in here on this little kind of contents card, whether it's made in the USA. So this is what I know is going to be in there. And these, again, these are literal scans of all of the Russian units. So let's kind of grab a few of these and we'll take a little look. So I want to show you, compared to them, we'll get these Russians out. These are the original Russians. I have these in a bag. Oh, I'm not going to get out the same ones, am I? So you've got a private here. Let's see. Well, it's not the same. This one's the same one here, I think. Okay. Here's a good example. All right. You've got these two privates here. And this is the original one, kind of punched out, no nice rounding. And these is, this is the modern one. They will... So you get, you know, nice white color, nice finish to it. All the same statistics there. As you can see, it's slightly reduced in size. You don't lose any detail or anything like that. And then the reverse side, you can see here, right, so here's where one of the differences is. This obviously has a very clean color palette. Here you can tell with the colors that it's scanned, right? You can see that it's not necessarily a uniform color across the board, and that's just from photo scanning. That's just kind of how that comes out. But this is a very convenient size for getting card um, sleeves. If you want to sleeve these games, which I probably will, just based on how much they they hit the table and how much play they get. And it's like you know, a little bit smaller, but nothing crazy where you're gonna um, have a hard time seeing anything. What they actually did, if you kind of look at the quality of the writing here, where it says the Mosey Nagant, the quality of that writing is. A little bit pixelated especially compared to the original and they found that with the with this stuff down here that, that was kind of causing an issue so you can see they just actually retyped it it's much more bold and they put that back in there's no there's no dots between the rows so you just kind of got to use your eyes on that one and there's a few different things in the game where they did that but that's pretty much what that looks like and we'll see here there's all of the Russians a lot of Russians and we've got the Germans as well, and we'll take a little look here. The Germans have that nice kind of powder blue. This actually, I feel like that blue's come out a lot nicer than that brown did a little bit. MP38 there. And then we've got, we should have some Americans back here. There you go. And the, they have nice green on them. This is a very bold green. These are all the units for the Americans here. So let's kind of take a look at some of the other cards here, because there's, there's a lot of these units, but they came out really nice. I'm actually very impressed with those. I'm very happy with that. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I, got a, I got a Japanese guy in here. I wonder if that's... Hmm... That might be a mistake. I may have accidentally got a single Japanese unit in there. I'm not sure about that. Dude. That would be nice and serendipitous if that was the case. So here we've got these are uh, these are more of the weapon markers. And these are double sided on both sides. There's a lot of different weapons on here. And then you've got a sniper lost marker, two sniper lost. Again, more of these weapons, and these weapon counters don't come up very much, but you can, it's these multifunctional cards that you'll twist and turn to use whichever way that you need them to. And those are used in place of these counters here. So instead of me having to cut these out and use these little, you know, photograph, um, semi-gloss, which these are nice, but I'm, I'm in it for the cards. I think those are a lot better. And if you look in the in the normal game, these are, I clipped these not long ago. These are full cardboard counters, but there's a ton of them because there's one for each unit. Well, every four of these are combined into one card, so there's a lot less. So that's actually quite nice. Uh, but that's that's what these are here. So uh, those are, those are a nice little 
streamlining of the components, so to speak. So that's that. I'm very happy about that. That means the game is much smaller. I can actually keep it in a small box. What we'll look at here is we have. Let's see. These are group markers. Okay. So these are your group markers, and these are actually much bigger because these were represented with counters down here. So you had these group, these group counters down here. And you would assign numbers to you, to your groups. You divide your troops. Say you had, you know, eight or ten um, of those cards for each guy. You divvy them up. All right, these guys are going to be in a squad, and these guys. You divide them up into little groups, and you assign each group a letter, and you line them up, and the enemy lines them up, and there's kind of this relative distance kind of thing, and this gives you um, some just some like rules about all the different bits and pieces, uh, special rules, but really you can use it just for this and kind of put your cards on top of it for the basic stuff. But you've got different types of troops, you've got commissars, which are, if the Russians start to run away with low morale, they're you know, going to get killed, not good. Um, they, these just have this kind of sub-rules in there, so you've got the Germans down here, like what to do with Panzerfausts and how they can utilize smoke, different uh, troop qualities, same with the Americans as well. So these are, these are a, kind of a, everything else has kind of been a reduction of the components. These are actually kind of a pimping out of the components, which I'm very excited for. That, that's nice just to give you, a, it's almost like a play aid, but you've got one for each of the groups there. So that's quite nice. And here we've got the weapons. And you'll notice here it says, no tuck. I believe there is a... There's a version of this where you can get tuck boxes for everything if you needed to. I'm just going to sleeve them and keep them in a box. So these are the, these are the um, these are the vehicles, and these I'm going to grab. Let's see, I've got Japanese, British, Germans, and Americans. Okay, so let's get some Americans out, and we'll take a little look at those and see what how the vehicles stack up here. Let's start with that one here. Is that this one? Yeah. Okay. So, these ones, the opposite, they shrank those men down. These are full poker sized cards. And you can see they've uh, they kind of, I think they're identical in size. I think the scan is a little bit bigger. They might have been blown up a tiny bit. Let's just get these ones. So, if you put this one on top of this one, you can see. There's writing on the bottom, and then there's a tiny tip of the star, so that tells you it was blown up ever so slightly. You can see this is a much more kind of vibrant green, and this is almost like a yellow, like a tan marsh color. And again, you get that same, and it's very difficult to see, but this is a very clean green. And if you look closely, it's, it's almost slightly pixelated, it looks a bit marshy. But the picture quality itself is still very, very good. Everything else, excellent detail. You don't lose anything in those, so that's nice. And here's the here's the reverse side. So I'm very impressed, considering this is a, these are scans. These are really nice. And this is um, this is a full deck. You got all of the German, all of the American units, all the German units here. You can kind of see here, this is a much better example, but this powder blue, you can see kind of the clouding here, and that's just from it being a photo scan, a digitized copy. You'll get that in, in uh, where it's uniform light colors, but the pictures themselves look very crisp. They're very nice. You're not losing anything there. The detail on the writing, it's not blurred particularly or anything like that. You know, the Russian units, and this is, a, this is quite a stark contrast, I feel. So this um, this brown is almost an orange compared to this very light oh, light brown there. So you, the, the, you know the colors aren't an identical replica. That's just purely because of the method by which they were made. Now we're going to come to kind of the, this is the last thing, the big stack of the action cards. And that's what we all came to play for, because the action cards dictate the flow of the game. This is the original kind of card-driven war game in my eyes. And there's so much of this game and the mechanics in it bleed out into modern 
CDGs. And we'll kind of take, I'm going to make a video about that maybe later and kind of see how that's developed. So let's take one of the, each of these. This is the original one and this is the new one as you can see. And the, the blue isn't as vivid, but I actually think that the greens are more vivid in this one. That might be partly due to age, but if you look, so these are lined up in the corners. They're basically the same height, but the new one is a got an extra half a centimeter here so you get a good regulation poker size on there and it does nothing functional functionally speaking but it helps significantly with finding card sleeves which which don't feel odd by having a lot of excess at the side so that's very nice so let's take a look and here, here's another thing that I noticed so again you got a nice brilliant white background and the scanning seems to be very good here you got this kind of off white because it's just old there's nothing no it's not bad quality it's just old so here you'll notice the writing is significantly darker this blue and that's because this light blue with this small font size did not scan well and they explain that when you're buying it they're like hey this is one of the big differences they had to literally type this this text out and put all these numbers um, and superimpose it over so that you can actually read it so yeah, if you're a purist, sure, why not? But I'm not. Um, and if anything, it's more readable. The dark on the light, this kind of light blue, sometimes you've got to strain your eyes a little bit to get that. But the stacks are kind of identical. Let's pull out some different ones. We'll pull out the building here. And let's see if we get a couple of different terrains so we can compare the pictures. Because on these black and white ones, great. You can barely tell any difference. It's like playing with the original game. But a couple, of the, a couple of the different pictures of the different terrain types, it becomes slightly more evident. In this game, the original game has a very, very um, iconic look to it. It looks like it's a game that was made back in, back in the 80s, you know. And so let's take a little look. So we've got, here's the two different Woods cards. Again, here's the original, and here's the new one. If anything, <laughs> you've got more vivid colors here. Uh, but it's just a slightly different, you know. And then we've got the buildings. Let's take a look at those. This is the new buildings on the left and the old buildings on the right. You just get a sli slightly more, it's more saturated. I've, uh, this is a card where I feel like the old one is better, you get better detail there. But outside of that, um, th these are actually a thicker quality card than these. And I'm going to sleeve these up and these are going to last forever. But this is just kind of a little comparison video of the kind of original Upfront and the new version of Upfront, which you can get, again, from Drive-Thru RPG. You can just search on their website. Um, it doesn't come with a box. They couldn't get licensing for the artwork. It just comes to you in a box. Um, and all those card stacks were sealed and had some packaging in them, so I'm going to find a small two-inch box to put them in, and I'm, I might, uh, you know stick the front cover of that PDF rules book on as like a cover but you have to find a storage solution but you can get a hold of this game at a reasonable price and I would highly recommend it um, this is good quality components and if anything it's slightly more intuitive almost an update to the game in a way with um, instead of having a gazillion markers you've got these kind of um, cards with all the different information that you can use in different ways so that was it that's a look at up front and you can get a hold of this like I said online um, thanks for watching. I've been Alexander from the